So now we're talking from sellers. I think, I think the best example of this, by the way, if you want to have a glimpse into the future today, is to use perplexity AI. Uh, if you've if you've heard of perplexity, it's a new search, uh, LLM based search. It's in my humble opinion far better than Google. Uh, you can talk to it. I will I will I will you know use perplexity two three times a day. I will I will talk to it. I'll just press record and ask it a question, and then I'll get the answer. And all of its answers are referenced from where the source is. So it's it's hyper accurate. Um, much more accurate than um, than some other AI tools that I've seen, but also it's much quicker to get to that fundamental answer than a Google search, which would take some scrolling and looking around. So I would say, if you want to see how this technology can work, how Rufus could work um, and and probably will work in six months' time, go and go and like try perplexity to your Google search, and you'll you'll get it immediately. How like a conversational based um, search can be really, really powerful and much better than what we have at the moment. So to to feed that information into Rufus, Cosmo's input is, so are you talking about like today, if you're creating a listing, you have all the, the you know, the famous Amazon templates, right? So that's how Amazon gets the information. So is that going to go away or not? I don't know. Um, I there's a tension in Amazon internally, and it existed when I was there, and there will be even more now between making making it as frictionless as possible to list products because you want to have as much selection as possible, and that's one arm of the business and set of people who it will be advocating for that. And then the other friction point is getting good quality data in order to make the customer search and customer browse experience as good as possible. So there's those two, there's those two competing uh, forces and principles in Amazon. And I, you know, they try and have this happy medium. I can't imagine that they just do away with all of the flat files to accurately list a product. They also have the legal implications of they can't misrepresent products. So you don't want to start well, I say this, you don't want to start AI generating random stuff, but they've done that with some listings, right? Uh, they started to rewrite listings in AI and, and put in false um, uh, attributes. So and it's a wild west at the moment. Who knows Who knows where, where all of this is going to land? Actually, only today uh, I was recording with another guest and he's a seller and also he's got a SaaS platform uh, for... Uh, content syndication for different marketplaces. And he was telling me about how much he's trying to distance himself from Amazon, primarily because he doesn't want 95% of his revenue to come from just one channel. Yeah. So he's trying to go. But one of the things that he mentioned that, uh, that he dislikes very much, he says, AI is now going in, changing people's, uh, updating people's listings, and in the process, using some words that Amazon algorithm picking up and suppressing the listings because yeah. they are. so and well, those are the things that are happening right now. Definitely. And what my, my one big insight to people when they think about Amazon is it's not one beast. It's not some massive monster gorilla. It is, in fact, a series of many, many individuals you know, millions of individuals, uh, hundreds of thousands of individuals in the, you know, in the business and tech units. And all of these individuals are motivated in, in very different ways. And you have different senior individuals, someone in, in charge of Seller Central, someone in charge of Cosmos, people in charge of different things, all, all advocating for their own areas. So it's, it's hard to, and I think about this as a SaaS platform, what are Amazon going to do? Are Amazon going to eat my dinner? All these questions I talk to investors about all the time. It's, it's actually, the, it's a harder question to answer because it's not just as what Amazon going to do, it's what is the senior vice president of Seller Central, what is he or she motivated to do? What are they doing? What is um, vendor, you know, the head of vendor, the head of Amazon own brand doing? Uh, when it when it comes into all of this, so that it, it just makes it a lot more complicated, it, and it means that not everything is predictable or, or, or logical almost in in the actions they take, because 
they're humans and they're motivated by getting the next promotion or they're motivated because they want to they're pissed off at some some specific thing and they just want to fix it and it's been bugging them for, for five years like who knows right but there's many yeah. reasons yeah yeah i mean uh, one thing for certain with amazon is this things are always changing and when you have a machinery and my favorite example is if you want to make a stool you just get a flat surface and three legs and then you'll have the perfect stool but good luck adding a fourth leg without making it wobble right mm -hmm. so so amazon has god knows how many how many legs yeah and when you add, and they keep adding new ones so clearly <laughs> wobble, it's a yeah so okay so am i hearing from you then max you are going to feed information into uh, Amazon through Seller Central for your listings in your usual way. But the nature of your content has to be as such that Cosmo can translate that into contextual matches. Exactly. Based totally on what right. Rufus is providing. Totally right. Yeah. Okay. So how do you do that then? So you no longer those, as you said, no longer those funny titles. No, but this calls for now. Okay, now you've got the situation. Okay, two hundred characters here, a thousand characters here, two thousand mm -hmm. characters here. A plus. So that means that Amazon is going to open up a lot more yeah. ways to submit more content. Then is that yeah. right? I don't think it. I don't think it necessarily has to submit more content. Um, I can talk about the three ways that we are helping customers add e content to do this. And I will again preface this with it's a fast moving space. And there's many, this is just my my opinion, but we've seen this in, in, in the data. So number one, we talked about quite a bit is intent-based matching. So you you really want to understand your audience more than ever, and you want to speak to them in the text. So it's not just about cramming all your long tail keywords like I, I i saw and i'm not going to name any names but i you know i know some some software platforms they're just like cramming loads of keywords into chat gpt uh, from you know using chat gpt and and bunch of keywords using rag putting that in a listing it's going to have terrible results because it doesn't make any sense it, it doesn't read for a human and these ais are smart they're you know the ones cosmo that they can understand that this lacks well they can firstly understand that the conversion you know the click through rates are lower the the people are spending less time on the listing they're adding it less to the basket and therefore all of these other factors will come in to not help the listing so you may have a tiny halo effect at some point for having tons of keywords in your listing but it's not going to last what's going to be uh, sustainable in the long term is understanding the customer uh, who you're selling to and writing it to them um, and matching the different use cases that they're going to be searching to in a broad sense, number one. Number two is the visual content. So creating lots of images, you know, you could either use AI, you could either get photographers, however you want to do this, but having images of your target demographic, your product in multiple different scenarios. Um, I, was, I was just with a customer earlier, you know, he was uh, use, doing uh, selling racks, doing racks in the kitchen, he's doing racks in the warehousing, all the different scenarios that you could potentially be buying these racking for is going to be important for Cosmo to understand the different, you know, if you have a 50-year-old uh, woman who's clearly a mother of three searching on Amazon compared to if you're on Amazon B2B and have a business searching on Amazon, like they could actually have the same product, uh, you know, but having the different contexts in the visual content is going to be helpful. Um, and then lastly, it's about monitoring and optimization. So um, what makes this very exciting is LLMs um, drift over time. So they get better, they get worse just by the nature of the technology. Um, forgetting the fact that Amazon is going to be constantly updating and refining these models. And as you say, with the, with the stall analogy, which I love, you change a little bit of an AI model over here and it has this unintended consequence somewhere else. And the reason is these are black boxes. Even the best AI scientists uh, don't fully understand how these models work. You know, once it's all compressed into tokens, it is a black box. 
the exact logic that these these models are applying to get their outputs. You can't kind of trace it back through them. Um, and so therefore monitoring and opto uh, monitoring how your content is performing and tweaking against what is working in the rest of your catalog. So those are the three broad strategies we, we're employing. Okay. Well, bottom line, more lifestyle images, ideally 3D, because I know you can also do 3D on Amazon, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And um, put write stories, really. I mean, that's what it's so just told, just like you would tell somebody, or oh, this is what exactly. it's called. So just tell your tell tell as much about your product as possible within the allotted space that Amazon provides, yeah. rather than pack it with keywords. I mean, exactly. Try to match it. I mean, remember these AIs have not just passed a Turing test; they've smashed a Turing test. Uh, the Turing test being, could you fool a human talking to a robot? They've not even they've not just passed this, but they also passed a reverse Turing test where they can identify humans in a in a room full of AIs. Uh, there's some really interesting um, videos on on kind of people programming this, and uh, with one human, one you know ChatGPT, Claude. Uh, and a bunch of different AIs and, and all of them trying to work out which is a human in the mix. So they get that right as well. So these things are uber intelligent and therefore they Amazon are very much um, incentivized to help sell to humans and that's what they want to do and that's going to be a big part of it. So uh, on the one hand, you do need to sell to the AI. You need to give it the context and the images. Uh, but on the other hand, in, in, the, in terms of the, in the written content, you do need to have something which makes sense for a human that it can it can read as a you know, intelligent um, being and and provide to provide in search. Yeah. 